Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Carefree Reacts. Sadly, not coming back after a victory, which is a little bit annoying because it does change the energy of these episodes a little bit, especially throughout the international break as well. It's going to be a jarring two weeks trying to explain this sort of performance against Forrest because in reality, like, I don't think there's a lot to panic about. There's not really a lot to melt down over, but there was chances that we could have taken and literally taking one of those chances could have been the difference between leaving with three points and leaving with one. But I guess the same energy can apply to Nottingham Forest as well. These guys did a really good job on us and we expected it. We knew Forrest was going to be a different sort of opponent to the likes of Brighton, to the likes of uh, West Ham. And it was going to be interesting to see how we handled their low block. First half, I didn't think we did well. Second half, I, I thought we were much better. Like, we actually broke that broke them down a couple times. It was just some moments were just sensational goalkeeping, which I'm so sick of saying coming out of games at the bridge. And other moments were just us being a bit wasteful, to be honest. I was being a little bit wasteful. Nonny had some good chances. I watched a couple of the, the opportunities back. He had a lot of good opportunities in the second half to bury the game off. Jao Felix as well should have at least put the header on target. The rest kind of comes down to good goalkeeping. There was uh, Cole Palmer's sensational double save. Well, Sell's double save on Cole Palmer. Um, and Kunku in the last minute. Well, this kind of goes straight at the goalkeeper as well. But there, there, there was enough chances that we could have taken in the game. And it's frustrating, but it's not really anything um, past that. But I was told, um, well, I was asked to react to her Sam. Talking about the Chelsea versus Nottingham Forest game. So, um, everyone sub to Sam, first and foremost. Big up to my guy every single time, even though I can already tell just off his facial expressions. He has been waiting weeks for Chelsea to drop points. But we'll see what he's saying. I haven't listened to this just yet. Um, I'm going to leave a link to it down in the description below as well. I, I know he might trigger the majority of you, but... Yo, it is part of the game as well, so I'm going to try and remember that as we go through this video. But big up to Don Hussam as well. I've, I'll probably see him later tonight on A-listers as well, but yeah. Let's get straight into the video. Let's get straight into the video. Let's see what he's saying. Stop disrespecting Chelsea. Hussam, you're worried about Chelsea. Ooh, Chelsea are scary. <laughs> yep, yep, he's been waiting ages for this. But you were wrong about Enzo Maresca. Blah, 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 blah. Robert Sanchez saved you against 10 men, Nottingham Forest. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Hello, everyone, and welcome to another pre-recorded match react. Again, not wrong. Sanchez did save us. Cells saved Forest too. Like, keep the same energy. Keep the same energy. I'm happy to say Sanchez saved us from losing, but you have to give the same energy to Forest. Cells was on a madness in the last 20 minutes. And again, it annoys me that I always say this about the goalkeepers, but... Yo, there was some sensational saves there. From Nkunku, from the Jao Felix double chances. Like, we he, we had opportunities to win the game and he saved them as well. The same energy's got to apply still. Action, short format reactions. Make sure you guys are slapping the like button. Make sure you guys are subscribing to the channel if you're yet to do so. Reacting to this right here. Chelsea couldn't even break down 10 men, Nottingham Forest. Chelsea couldn't even break down 10 men, Nottingham Forest, ladies and gentlemen. 10 men. And see, see, here's the thing. Another thing. I, I know I'm nitpicking a little bit, but um, we did break them down. We did break them down. Number one, we scored. Number two, we made enough chances, especially when they dropped deep, even when they went down to 10 men to win the game. So it wasn't that we couldn't break them down. It's just we didn't get the second goal. That's what it was. But I mean, if we couldn't break them down, we wouldn't have scored like, like, like certain teams. But, but we move. And how long did Nottingham Forest have 10 men for? How long? Finish the sentence. 78 minutes is when Ward Prowse yeah. got sent off. That's 12 minutes until full time and 30 minutes of added time. 25 minutes. 25 minutes against 10 men. 25 minutes against 10 men, Nottingham Forest. Yeah, you see, t 25 minutes isn't good. It's, I didn't even clock it was that many minutes, which is jarring. But again, it is rich from the man who couldn't even score against Forrest. 
Like I feel like Liverpool of all clubs should understand how difficult it is to try and break down that defence. At least we did it. At least we did it. These men didn't. For us, and you still couldn't score. Where was the best player in the world, the best player in the league, Cole Palmer? I scored. I scored, Cole Palmer. I scored. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm freezing. Let me switch what? off the AC. Here's the AC remote. I'm going to switch off because I'm freezing from this Cole Palmer I scored performance. Hold that. He stat padded an assist with a shit pass to Madweke. That wasn't even a good. I, I know that ain't a Salah fan talking about stat padding. That's crazy. And while we're talking about Salah, what did he do against Forrest? Genuinely, that might have been one of his worst ever performances in a Liverpool shirt against Forrest. Like, Palmer was poor first off. I won't even try and sugarcoat that one. But he, he literally got an assist and could have won the game himself with a brilliant individual move if it weren't for two sensational saves from Cells. He even had a lot of key passes in the game too. Like, yeah, by Palmer's standards, it might have been a bit of a drop-off. But what, do you mean, what, what, what did Palmer do? Literally got an assist and could have won the game if it wasn't for insane goalkeeping. What is this? Good pass. That wasn't even a good pass. He passed it away from him. Madweke got all the work. He stat at the GA. Nowhere to be found. Not everyone... Salah fan talking. Not everyone's going to play high lines against you like Brighton. Not everyone's going to go all out gung-ho against you like Wolves. Today, Nottingham Forest came to Stamford Bridge with 10 men and you still... I mean, to, to be fair, Wolves tried to um, do a low block. They just put Ait Nuri in DM for no reason. Killed themselves. Couldn't beat them. And now I know the response. Hussam, you lost to Nottingham Forest at home. Well, guess what? You drew to Crystal Palace at home and we beat Crystal Palace away. We can play this game all year long. This is not... But, I mean, it is still true. We want to take context out of the situation to suit the narrative and everything, but it is true. Like, I, I could hear this from an Arsenal fan, potentially, or, or um, maybe not a United fan, a Man City fan, potentially. But a Liverpool, it, it, it's shameless. How can you mock Chelsea for struggling, struggling to break down Forest when you couldn't? We got a goal. We didn't lose. You lost. You didn't even make their net ripple. We did. We had multiple opportunities to do so. Forrest just completely locked you lot off. So, I mean, that's why people are going to bring up the Forrest result because it is ridiculous coming from the Liverpool fans. It's insane, but we move. It's not the Liverpool Forest match reaction. There was already a Liverpool Forest match reaction. I already cooked my players. I already spoke about my players. This is the Chelsea Forest match reaction in which you could not be 10 men. Well, we just brought up Palace five seconds ago, Fez. And Nottingham Forest. And we're lucky. Lucky to even get the point at the end of the game. You were lucky to even get the point at the end of the game. And this is a message to Chelsea fans. Stop overrating your players. Stop doing too much because this is the problem with Chelsea fans. You've been starving for so long. You've had starvation for two years to the level now where any player puts on two, three good performances. All of a sudden, he's better than Saka. He's better than Mo Salah. He's better than this guy. He's better than... I don't even mention right wings. <laughs> it must be the Palmer thing again. But... But for the fans that actually thought we were in a title race, because I actually thought it was only a select few, but yesterday showed me that there was actually a good, a decent chunk of fans who were believing a little bit in it. Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of needed to hear that one still, because title race, no, 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 no. We aren't going to have the consistency for that. That's, again, why I'm not even that annoyed about a result like this. Well, not uh, I'll say not angry. Annoyed, yes. Angry, no. Kind of anticipated a frustrating game like this. I just, I thought we would break them down. I really thought we would have got something. Or we, the second goal would have come through, but uh, we move. We move. Better than that guy. Stop overrating your players. Today was a player that Chelsea fans don't even really like that much in Madueke that even got you something in this game. All your top players didn't That's show up. Where was Nicholas Jackson today? Nicholas Jackson, nowhere to be seen, nowhere to be found. He's in the lost and found department. Not wrong. Not even wrong. I'll be so real. First off, I couldn't even find Jackson to save my life. Second off, the, I think the best thing he did was the Ward-Prowse second yellow. And even that, that was more on Ward-Prowse. Yeah, fairs.
All good. All he's good at today is just fighting the Nottingham Forest players. But on the pitch, nada, no performance, nothing. No one is worried about Chelsea. No one is scared of Chelsea, you guys. No one. Get it. Yeah, you're gonna have to speak for yourself on that one, still. Together and stop overrating your players. No one overrates his players as much as Chelsea fans. No one. Declan Rice doesn't start for Chelsea. Odegaard doesn't start for Chelsea. Blah blah blah. Odegaard Depot don't start for Chelsea. Odegaard definitely doesn't. If Palmer's playing 10, Odegaard is not starting for Chelsea. And that's all due respect to Odegaard, even though he's a gooner. If Palmer's playing 10, he's not playing. He's not playing. It's as simple as that. Simple as that. Um, I forgot who was even the other one that he doesn't said. Doesn't start for Chelsea. Oh, it was Declan Rice. Um, Declan Rice, I, I would be tempted to debate Lavia if Lavia could just stay fit. Sadly, Lavia can't stay fit, so it's just it's it's an if argument, and I can't really be bothered for if arguments. Oh, the guard doesn't start for Chelsea. Blah. In your dreams, you come to Anfield and beat us at Anfield. We're still going to be above you in the league. So no one is. One's got his copium ready if we beat them. Fair enough. I rate it. Worried about Chelsea. No one is scared of Chelsea. No one sat there going like, "Oh my God, Chelsea are so scary." I'm worried. I'm scared. No one is scared. No one is worried. I'm here to deliver you the truth. This Maresca stuff will take time, and you guys are impatient, and that's your problem. Impatience. Neto today, nothing. Felix today, nothing. Palmer today, nothing. Sancho. Oh. Net Neto made a really good cross for Jal Felix that he should have at least headed on target. Palmer, again, could have won the game. So, yeah, Felix, I'll be real. Felix didn't do anything. That one I agree with you on. But Neto, Neto in limited time did something. Palmer actually contributed enough to leave with the victory in the second half. But I will move. I want to hear the Sancho thing because I thought he was our best forward first half. Oh, thank you, Man United, for selling us Jaden Sancho. Thank you, Man United, for selling us Jaden Sancho. Oh, thank you so much, Manchester United. Where was he today? Where was he today? Yeah, he was our best forward first half. It was between him or Nonny, but I think Sancho got more things correct in the first half still. He got an assist against West Ham where Nicholas Jackson done all the work. Bournemouth, he was okay. And the last game as well. He Wait, Bournemouth, he was okay? Oh, this is ridiculous. This is actually ridiculous. What was the other where one? Where Nicholas Jackson done all the work. Bournemouth, he was okay. And the last game as well. He, did, he was he was he was good in that game, but nothing special. This is a message hey, to Chelsea Brighton. Fans. You finish. He he was nothing special. Oh my goodness, Hassan. This is stinky, bruv. What are we doing? It's twelfth. You finished sixth, and you finished almost on the Poch tax. top four last season. You're on a top four race. Poch Stop tax. overrating your players. Your players are not better than Liverpool. Your players are not better than Arsenal. Your players are not better than Manchester City. Our attack is better than Arsenal's. We could argue the midfield. Same argument for Liverpool as well. And again, Liverpool's attack couldn't even score against Forest. Ours could. Ours had enough chances to win. So I, I, I don't get it. But like, shout out to Sam. So I'm going to leave the rest of the video for you guys to go and enjoy. Link will be down in the description below. Um, also the ads to his channel as well. Shout out to Sam. Like I said, we hate each other's football clubs. But that's still family every single time so big up to him i wanted to bring up this tweet as well because we want to talk about people um coming out of the shadows as soon as we drop points it didn't take this guy long can't even win at home against 10 men absolute shambles and embarrassing but the data says chelsea are back shush man's doing up shush after one draw this is actually disgusting and it's meant to be some from someone who's proper chelsea He's meant to be a real Chelsea fan and all of that. And he's come out of the, out of the shell as soon as we drop points to talk about how much of an absolute shambles we are and, and waffling about the data saying that we're bad. Like, I get it. Frustrating result. But are you genuinely going to tell me that this team hasn't improved from last season? Are you genuinely going to try that BS? It says a lot. It says a lot if this is the sort of narrative that we're trying to run. And correct me if I'm wrong, I bet that's been his only tweet. I bet that's been his only tweet. Tuchel to United will wind me up. They don't deserve him. find it hard to find myself agreeing with him, but a broken clock is right twice a day, I guess. And something about Tottenham. Something about Tottenham. 
I don't really care about Tottenham being Tottenham, but this, this, I said, but the data says Chelsea are bad. What, would you prefer last season's Chelsea under Maurizio Pochettino with 15 injuries? We lost that game last season. We lost away at West Ham and we've won this season. We drew at Bournemouth, we won this season. We lost at Wolves, we won this season. And yet we still have crap narratives like this. It's embarrassing. Meant to be from one of our own, but... I guess certain men were waiting for a situation like that, which is a real shame. It's a real shame. But there was one other video that I wanted to touch on um, before we wrap up the show. Because I got sent this video a couple of days ago where um, Olivia referenced the disconnect that she was talking about after we lost to Manchester City. So just to bring up the tweet for everybody again. After we lost to Manchester City, the Four Peters, the champions, all of that... Um, there was waffle about feeling slightly disconnected to the club right now. Just can't get my head around a lot of things. I always support my team. I know that connection will come back over time. I just don't know how to feel right now. The first thing I'm going to say is she definitely is a Chelsea fan. But disconnected. Disconnected over a loss to Manchester City. And then I think... Where was the other one? Where was the other one? <laughs> she must have ended up deleting the other one. She ended up standing on business a second of uh, the day or two afterwards. I'm going to bring that one up while I bring the video up. But I am interested to see her reaction or how she res how she tries to explain that situation. Shout out to Alex Goldberg. Shout out to the byline. I'm going to link leave a link to their channel as well in the description. But yeah, le let's, let's listen to this. Okay. Um, but we should address the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> so funny do you know i I've, i'm actually thinking about this a lot and like I, like i say i will always be 100 percent honest i will never i'll never not say anything i don't genuinely believe and at that time there was do you know the way i look at it is just because you agree with decisions that the club has made doesn't make you a bigger fan than someone who disagrees with some of the decisions that have been made and that's my point is that I agree with that. It doesn't make you a bigger fan. But I mean, as a rep of the club, also, um, disagreement should make you waffle about being disconnected and losing love with the club that you support. Like, especially after a loss to Manchester City. It's a little bit weird, but I go for it. Listen, there was decisions right. under Roman that I didn't agree with. And this reminds the feeling I had when I wrote that tweet was exactly the same feeling I had when Lampard got sacked and Tuchel came in. And I remember... Oh, brother. We got felt disconnected because Lampard got sacked. Like, come on, Lampard was forever a legend. But, I mean, it was plain and obvious to everybody that the job got too big for him. Awful away form. The midfield was a mess. Every centre midfielder looked like crap. Jorginho looked washed. Kante looked washed. Kovacic looked washed. Don't even get me started on the defenders because our defensive system was a mess. James and Chilwell got rushed back and they were out of form. Don't know if you remember the 3-1 loss to Arsenal. She said we weren't ready to meet to win major trophies after adding another 300 million to the squad and she wanted him to stay. We were ninth. We were ninth. Oh my goodness. I remember sitting there thinking... Like at that time being like, you know, I just don't care as much. Like, I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. I just, I'm not really bothered. Like from going from being so obsessed. So sounds like the support goes down whenever a favourite gets sold. And also, funnily enough, Chelsea aren't doing too well in the league. That's what it sounds like. We're disconnected when Chelsea were ninth. We were disconnected um, when we lost to Man City first game of the season. That's what it sounds like. Feeling disconnected the day after a loss to City first. With Chelsea, and I, like I still am, obviously, but there's just times where you go up and down. And I always said, it's never going to change my support for the team. I'm always going to support this team. I'm never going to boo anyone. I'm never going to, like, I will support whoever goes on that pitch, regardless of how I'm feeling. Um, th there was, all it was, was there was some big decisions that I didn't agree with. And I stand by them. I, don't, I still don't agree with them. Um, but there's also been decisions that mm. I think they've been great and there's been decisions that I think they should get so much credit for for, for those decisions that they've made so there is a still a little feeling where, like 
I know it's going to come back with time. It did with Tuchel and it didn't take very long, but that was because Thomas Tuchel is who Thomas Tuchel is. And I wonder why it didn't take so long to reconnect with, with Thomas Tuchel. I, I wonder why. I wonder why. Was it, was it the UCL? Did it have anything to do with the UCL that we won like three months afterwards? Hmm. But we were disconnected in ninth. Oh, boy. He quickly became, you know, every Chelsea fan literally got on board with him and just absolutely loved him. You have certain affiliations with managers. I did, didn't have that affiliation with Graham Potter. I, did, I don't have it with Maresca. I had it with Poch and I had oh, it with Tuchel. Oh, you're, you are kidding me. So you don't have it with Maresca this early, which I, again is a little bit early. I get it, but at least he's force. He's trying to make a statement to the players to keep going around and showing the fans appreciation. But you had that connection for Poch, Poch, Poch. You had us in mid table for most of the season and basically refused to acknowledge the fans after games. But you had connection for him. But but not for Maresca. I I swear on my life. I There's swear just on my life. managers that I think you click with and certain This man never even clapped the fans once, by the way. Never showed appreciation to the fans. Oh my and goodness. Managers you don't. And I'm not saying that's never gonna happen. Maresca is a very straight talking decision. He a uh, straight talking manager. He says things up front, he's honest, and I don't think you can argue with how he's been how he's dealt with everything that's been thrown his way, because it has been difficult. Um Yep, certain fans being disconnected and throwing their toys out at the Pram on match day one. There, there was just, yeah, all it was was I just felt a little bit, what's the word? Maybe not disconnected, but a little bit. No, 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 no. You said disconnected. Let's, let's not even try and sugarcoat it. Because I also found the other tweet, by the way, where she stood on business again. I'm not afraid to feel slightly disconnected. The day after, one of the many people that hasn't actually read where I'm win, what I've written, just because I feel slightly disconnected doesn't mean I don't want us to win or I'm not going to support us. So you do feel disconnected. Let, let, let's not try and waffle that it's anything else. It is disconnection. Disconnection is like where you lose love. When you're in love with something, you're connected to it. When you're not in love with something, you lose a connection to it. What's the word? Like when you just feel a little bit far. Mm -hmm. You don't feel as exactly. close to the club as you want to. Sure. Exactly, because we drop down the table. And that's perhaps because of everything that's gone on even sort of the process of Roma coming to an end and 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 the, the new ownership taking over. But just because I don't agree with some of the decisions and I feel a little bit far from the club doesn't mean I'm going to not like support them. Like, I'll always support them. Uh, this is the crux she keeps going back to. No one's saying that you're not a supporter. I'm just saying, like, every time the club seems to not be in a good state, you seem to lose a connection to it, which doesn't really sound great. Doesn't really sound great. I mean, that if that was certain other fans, they'd be calling them glory hunting and everything. But we move. The team, I'll always support every single player that goes on that pitch. So, I mean, everyone just jumped on on it and is now it's just gone way too far, to be perfectly honest. But I mean, with this fan base on Twitter, I expect it. Like That's what happens when you're a big representative of Chelsea. Every single word you say matters. If it was any other random person saying it, nobody cares. When you're someone who's as big of a name and as big of a face as you are, you got to be careful about what you say in it because every, word's, every word counts. We know what the internet's like. I don't expect anything less. Um, but I also think a lot of people were probably feeling how I was feeling, but I didn't say it. Um, Speak for yourself. But I, you no, know, hold on, let me jump in there. Let me jump in there. Um, and this is, this is my small... I don't want to say it's a defense of you, although it kind of is, but this is my... <laughs> This is my clap back to people who give you shit. Mm. How is what you said anything different than Drogba saying, I don't recognize my club anymore? It's not. It's literally not. And this is that I, I, I didn't agree with Drogba saying that, by the way, either. Like, we're in the middle of a rebuild that he clearly didn't like or understand at the time. But then again, like, Drogba was also the one complaining about Mount being sold. Like, big up to Drogba, legend. I don't even have to say it. Like, it goes without saying. But. Don't mean I have to take his words of gospel. Matt is he's just another human being, same as all of us. I I can't be asked to argue with people. Like I have Of course, of course, because you got outed for being wrong. You know what? I have I don't mind a debate. Half the reason I love Twitter or X and I use it a lot is because I love a debate and I love chatting to people and I understand people will have 
different opinions that like, that's just life like but it's not an opinion it's a feeling that's the whole point of the word disconnect when you love something you're connected to it like i said before when you don't then you're not connected so you lose love when we're in bad positions that's it but for whatever reason like, people are abusive which i don't like and i never will and that's why i just block people yeah, yeah no abuse no abuse like, i'm just trying to be as real as possible i ain't trying to cuss her out and i don't want anyone to do that either we'll just call it what it is i like that um but like it it's because it's Didier Jogba and Didier Jogba can get away with saying what he wants, like because sure. of everything he's done for the club. Like everyone that knows me knows I don't really work for the club anymore. Like I do, but not to the extent I did. I don't get paid ever to give my opinions on Chelsea. I don't, I don't get paid to say, I say whatever I believe on Twitter. Everything I write down on Twitter is exactly how like, I feel. So you did feel disconnected. Like, what is this absolute waffle, man? Uh, this is long. Man's going round in circles trying to explain something that she already knows sounds terrible anyway. It's just you've said it twice now and you have to stand on business. What a waste. I ain't watching no more of that because it's like 51 minutes and it's long. But you guys can go watch the video as well. The link is down in the description below. Big up to every single one of you. And yeah, that wraps up another episode of Carefree Reacts. If you man want to show me anything that you want me react, uh, to react to, um, message me or at me on my Twitter. Bar that, let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you agree or disagree with anything that I've said, let me know. If you guys want to see the show a little bit more regularly, let me know. And bar all of that, hit the likes, subscribe. Potch out. I didn't get an opportunity to say bum Pochettino, so I'm going to run that at the end of the show. And yeah, big up to everybody and peace. Up the Chels. Up the Chels.